What in the world is going on with the mortgage rates? That's the topic of my next video. Hello everybody, this is uh, Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes, and this is my first journey on Zoom video conferencing saves me, and in this case, Quentin, a lot of time when we want to get some good content out to everybody uh, out there in Facebook and YouTube uh, land. So Quentin is from Movement Mortgage. He is a mortgage <clears throat> guy that I use. And I figured I'd ask Quentin the, the famous question, what in the world is going on with mortgage rates? I remember about 15 years ago, I refinanced and they said the rates are never going to be lower than they are 15 years ago. And luckily for me, <laughs> They're a lot lower now than they were back then. So, Quentin, can you introduce yourself a little more and tell us about that? Sure. My name is Quentin Hardy of Movement Mortgage. I am a 17-year mortgage industry veteran, um, and I work for a, a company that is the sixth largest purchase money lender in the country. We just passed Chase last year, so we're a significant purchase bank, mortgage bank. But we just opened our first branch here in Long Island, July of 2018, we were licensed. So the, the name is not very well known here in the area, but it's uh, we're in 49 states, big bank. And um, yeah, lo lots of good information, lots of good loans, lots of good stuff happening right now in the market. Uh, what are the, um, why are the mortgage rates going down? I mean, in general, I know things change. If, if I had a crystal ball, I'd be making a lot of money. Uh, so what do you think from a mortgage person's you know viewpoint, what's going on that these, it's happening, you know, what we see. Well, I'll, I'll give you the answer, uh, sort of a layman's answer, but first I'm gonna tell you why they're not going down because most people believe that the interest rates go down with the Federal Reserve, right. when the Federal Reserve makes a change. And every time the Fed cuts rates, I hear people say, I heard the Fed just cut mortgage rates, which is interesting because they never ever say that. And I'm always wondering why do you people, why do people think it's mortgage rates? And why didn't they say, I heard the Fed cut student loan rates or car, car note rates, or they always say mortgage is what they think. But in, in, believe it or not, the Fed is cutting what's called the overnight funds rate. It has nothing to do with mortgages directly. And usually when the Fed cuts rates, mortgage rates go up. So that begs the question, then why is it that they cut rates and rates went down? It's, it has nothing to do with the Fed. So when the Fed cuts rates or, or raises rates, there's not a direct correlation it doesn't always go up or down based on what the Fed does. But we have to understand why the Fed is cutting rates. The Fed's job, the Federal Reserve's job, is to keep our economy on track. If it's going too fast, we're growing too much, they want to cool things down by raising interest rates and making money expensive. And they do the opposite if things are going not going so well. So right. by them cutting rates, what they're saying is that our economy is starting to get a little too cool and they want to heat things up. Now, realize that they raised rates in December of last year so they were trying to go the other direction and now they're trying to reverse. And what's really happening is last year we had a, a growth in the, our economy about 2.9% and this year it's about 2%. They went, oh, it's only 0.9%. Yeah, that's about a third less. So they're, they're concerned that we're slowing down too much and they're trying to get things picked up. So the mortgage interest rates are impacted by a whole lot of things, whether it's something called quantitative easing, whether it's what's happening around the world and other markets. It, it, a lot of it is really tied to the 10-year treasury yield on, on bonds. It has to do with more with the bond market than the Federal Reserve or the stock market. But uh, just to give you another example, even the politics of what happens is last time the Fed cut rates, interest rates went down. This was in July. And everybody's like, see, the Fed cut rates, mortgage rates went down. But what people sometimes didn't catch is that the next day, the White House came out and basically said that we're going back to a trade war with China. That's what moved the stock market down and made mortgage interest rates come down. It wasn't really the Fed as much as it was the political reaction to it. So we have to understand is that mortgage interest rates do not operate in a vacuum, just like stocks, bonds, and any other interest rate. It's moved by a whole different bunch of factors. Right now, we are seeing very, very close to the lowest rates we've ever seen since 2012. And anybody who tells you they're the lowest they're ever going to be, obviously no one can predict the future. So um, by the time the people watch this video, the rates could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. They change on a daily basis. And when there's a lot of volatility like we have now, sometimes they change multiple times in a day. Right now we are seeing rates at a very near of the lowest we've ever seen. 
So on a lot of 30-year fixed products, you're going to see rates in the threes. 15-year fixed products, you're going to see the low threes, sometimes even the twos, depending on the product, your qualifications, where the house is. There's about a dozen things that go into determining what your interest rate is. So there is no interest rate. There's interest rates on different products and different programs. So I think that's a long answer, but did I give you what you were looking for? That was definitely a long answer. And I'm in the real estate business, but for the layman, let's cut it down into a couple of things. Rates are the, pretty much the lowest they've been since you've been in real uh, in mortgage industry. And you yeah, said, we're really close to the bottom. About 17 years you've been doing this? About 17 years. Yeah. Okay, so since I was the 10. next question is 30 year versus 15 versus the difference between an investment property and a second um, house, you know, like a vacation house for somebody and how mortgage rates, would they be higher or lower for those things without giving specific numbers? Because like you mentioned, they always change. Sure. It's really simple. It really all comes down to risk. When a bank makes a loan, they're trying to determine what is the probability that the money will come back to us and in a timely manner. So a, a primary home has the lowest risk. A vacation home has about the same risk as a primary home, statistically speaking, or a second home, vacation home. An investment property does not. I mean, think about it. If you fell on hard times and you had to let one of your properties go, are you going to let the one go that you and your wife and your children live in? Or are you going to let the investment property go? So the investment properties have usually about half a percent, sometimes more, depending again on um, the down payment and credit and programs and products, et cetera. Uh, it could be half a percent or more higher than the standard 30-year fix, for example, um, on a primary residence. Okay. A second home should be about the same. I always warn people, however, because sometimes that people tell me that this is their second home or their vacation home when it's really an investment. That's called fraud. So don't tell the bank that you're going to be living in a house you're not. And I think the example you and I discussed is the, the person who lives in uh, Roslyn saying that they're buying a uh, second home in Hempstead. Right. Nothing's wrong with Hempstead or Roslyn, but the point is nobody goes to vacation in Hempstead if they live in Roslyn. Now, if you're living in Roslyn and you're going to buy a house in the Hamptons or you're buying a, a house in Manhattan, a, a condo in Manhattan because you work in Manhattan, and sometimes stay there two or three nights a week because you're a, a surgeon that has to be in the mm -hmm. OR at three in the morning. Okay, those are things that make sense. That's a second home or vacation home. So it's got to make sense. What about a sense. case where a family member, you know, wants um, a father and mother want to buy a home for their kids that might be right down the block, and the kids live in that house? Is is the bank going to say, well, this is an investment property, or if they can document and show? that either, well, the title could be in the parent's name, but the kids are living in there. Is that problematic or is that something that could be done? That's a very complex one. There are programs, uh, for example, I did, I did have a, a, a physician who lived on Long Island buying a, a second home near NYU for his daughter to live in. That counted as a second home. Even though he wasn't gonna be staying there, that, that's a family situation, that's okay. Now, if you're just buying one at the end of the block, um, there are certain programs that will count that as a second home for people, for example, people who are buying for aging relatives. Right. Um, I have had people do that. Um, and sometimes it's really an investment property that that's, that's a case by case. We've got to delve deep into what's actually happening with the home, who's going to be living there. So sometimes that's a, that is a truly a second home and other times it is an investment. So basically, you just got to, if this is what you're claiming, you got to be able to back it up with uh, legit documentation to prove your case to the bank, and then it, it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever with the same Absolutely. interest rate as your primary residence. Right. It's, it's All right. Sense. With, uh, don't want to go too long on this video. So thank you very much, Quentin Hardy from Movement Mortgage. My and pleasure, sir. we will be doing this again in the future now that I'm learning how to use Zoom. Hello. Yes, I'm talking to you, the person that watched my video to the very end. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Like me on Facebook. I am a licensed real estate agent in New York State, but I also have a referral service that deals nationwide. So if you're looking for to buy or sell a house anywhere in the United States, 
please send me a text, contact me via phone, and I'll set you up with a local professional in your area. If you're in my vicinity, I'd be more than happy to help you out in any of your real estate transactions that you'd like. This is Mark Schreier from Century 21 American Homes, and I'll talk to you soon.